Hi guys, and welcome to my guide. This is going to be my Huntress guide for beginners, for anyone to beginners to masters. So, hope you enjoy. Alright, so, first we're going to start off by talking about perks. So, for as a beginner, I would recommend running Barbecue, Discordance, Ruin, Iron, and Iron Maiden. Now, depending on the map you could, and totem spawns, Ruin could be terrible, it could just not work. But, Ruin is probably your best bet, or you can run Corrupt instead, but I wouldn't run both. And this is why, because if you run Corrupt, people are more likely to run around the map and cleanse totems, and therefore find your Hex, cleanse it immediately, right? So, but either way, Corrupt and Ruin both have their RNG to them. So, like, if you, like, for example, you could, you could have Corrupt on bad gens that just don't work for you in the map, and your Ruin could be in a bad spot as well. Obvious, it could be just cleansed instantly. This is a risky take, but in my opinion, you sh should never run pop on Huntress because in order for pop to even be somewhat worth it, you need to run it in combination with Brutal Strength because otherwise with Huntress, because she is such a slow killer mobility-wise, she just can't get around the map. So stopping to kick gens to get that regression is just not worth it, right? And then, so we have Iron Maiden as well because Iron Maiden, honestly, is a beginner Iron Maiden is your best friend. You want to be running this perk because, in my opinion, the way you play Huntress, any way you decide to play her once, you're, once you've, you've learnt, Iron Maiden gives you the opportunity to throw as many hatches, figure out what hits, what doesn't. And this is crucial for Huntress because you can just get so much better, so much faster. Um, then we have Discordance, which Discordance kind of helps you learn, honestly, where to... Th where on gens you throw. So basically when it, you hear Discordance go off, you know there's two people on a generator, right? Um, now if you th usually if you throw either slightly left of the gen aura or slightly right of it, you're, you're going to have a chance of hitting someone. Because unless you've got really weird gen spawns, you're not going to actually have to throw over it to try and get them. Because this is again a much more advanced shot. That you get the, it's going to take much more like experimenting and trying to get that kind of shot. But generally Discordance is a great way to guarantee that you start figuring out like how to throw into those gens, right? Now, then we have barbecue. Now, barbecue, honestly, this is there for blood points, honestly. <laughs> like, it does help you start learning to, to cross map and using gen, using auras, but honestly, you don't you do not need you don't need it. You could have something else in its place, but honestly, I would just recommend it for that reason. BP and you get like that aura of course as well it does it can be helpful but don't like I wouldn't rely on it it's just something to help you get better right <clears throat> now I, with perks like I've said this this build is pretty solid but a lot of people would think oh what about nurses what about um I don't know like I'm all ears like these aura perks why not run these these perks are kind of, they're luxuries, right? They, they give you something that is not really necessary. They're more for, I'd say, once you already know what you're doing, you can f mess around with like all different sorts of um, aura perks and like, even undying retribution. But I would wait till you just, you know, you know the basics, you know, like you already, you have your style worked out. You know what you like, you know, you need this sort of stuff. That's, that's the sort of stuff you would be, when you'd be looking at those sort of perks. That's why I've kept a minimal aura reading. That's why it's just barbecue for this. Anyway. Alright, and for add-ons, basically, I think when you're learning, you should really just be... I would honestly recommend if you take add-ons, you should take honestly, leather loop, infantry belt, or both. Because the more hatchets you have, the more ability, like, the more you can just keep going for shots, keep trying, seeing what works, what doesn't, you know? I wouldn't fuck with, like... Oak, oak half. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about cooldown or um, wind up because these will throw you off. You'll learn the wrong timings, the wrong patterns. It'll. It'll seem. It'll make you learn the wrong things. Right. Basically, it'll make you be reliant on those specific add-ons. What you could also use is disc and gloves because that with Iron Maiden it even enhances it even more. Like it because it's like fifty percent plus like twenty five percent or thirty percent you get from uh, from the add-on. And it's just super damn quick, right? So th that's also another f decent add-on to run. But I would just I would stay away from wind up and cooldown. 
uh, between hatchet throws. The rest are kind of eh, not too good. I also wouldn't mess with flight speed. That's more of an advanced thing you would use. It, and it will also make you, like, the timings for shots are much different, and different types of hatchets would go all over the place. So I, would just, I wouldn't mess with those while you're learning. Um, yeah. Alright, so with Huntress, you have two types of hatchets. You have an arc or a lob, which is not fully charged. Then you have a fully charged hatchet when you hear that ding. Alright? Fully charged hatchets are flatter and they go faster, right? And you don't need as much elevation. So if you aim up here and you just, like, it's not going to hit anything, right? It's going to go out of the map. So, a fully charged hatchet is it's, it's used for, like, kind of like line of sight or timing cross maps, basically, right? So if you go like that, it'll, it'll hit someone running around, running over there. And then, to get further distance, you need to aim up a little bit with more elevation, right? That'll hit someone further away, right? But then with arcs, you can aim much higher up, and you can hit someone in the map, right? Because it goes, it, when you aim up higher with a less charged hatchet, it will arc over and drop down suddenly, right? And you can do this over objects as well. So, for this, for the for the purpose of this, right? This is a fully charged, and this is technically an arc. Right? Because it's not fully charged, it goes slower, gives them more time to dodge, for example. Um, stuff like this, right? It's just like... It's two, like, they have, they serve two very different purposes, right? Okay, so here's an example of arcing. See, so that hits her, right? Over the object. Do that again, downs her, right? See, with arcing, you can throw it over objects that would, you would otherwise not be able to, right? Because if you throw that a fully charged hatchet, it's it's gonna go straight into the into the tire. It's not you're not gonna be able to arc over it, right? And then on some loops, when they cr even when they crouch, you can arc over and hit them. And it, actually, on a lot of loops, you can arc over and hit them, right? The power of arc or or, or lobs. They are insanely good. They are extremely powerful. A lot of people don't expect them. That and sniping through gaps that people don't realize are the two most powerful things, in my opinion, with Huntress. Cross maps are, are a lot more predictable, um, and you can see them coming a lot more easily, right? But this is more advanced stuff anyway, so more on that later. Now, as for learning where the center of your screen is or where the hatchets go. Sure, one option is using a crosshair. I've never used one personally. I didn't learn that way. Um, but that is an option. But honestly, from just play time, the more you play and the, the more you throw hatchets, you'll learn where whereabouts your hatchets go and whereabouts the center is in your screen, right? It's just an experience thing. The longer you, the longer you play, the better you get, right? Um, and then this comes in hand in hand with, you know, when you're throwing over loops, right? So, a lot of people are just like, oh, stand back. Yes, standing back is a part of it. Like, you can stand a little bit back from loop, but you don't, but it's not all about that, right? It's about, ha so like every hatchet that you throw, when it's under fully charged, um, the more you charge it or the less you, the more and less you charge it changes where it's going to go in combination with how high you aim it, right? Now, this will just come with experience. You've got to go in and try to, like, it's not an exact science, in my opinion. You just aim, if it, if it hits, if it goes into the object not over, you got to, means you need to aim up a little bit, right? Maybe charge it slightly differently. Like, it, it, this is something that comes with experience, all right? It's not something that you're just going to know um, day one. Um, and then, yeah, that, that comes into the, the whole however much you charge it and where you aim it, it's going to go somewhere different, right? The only one that, ch that is m very fixed is the fully charged hatchet. That is much more fixed um, about where it's going to go because it goes flatter, faster. It's, there's no room for changing where it's going to go really too much. Alrighty, guys. So here is some Huntress gameplay, right? So... Firstly, the the best thing I can ever tell you is always trust your instincts and never hesitate with Huntress. Especially this goes especially when you're learning because before you know your style, you want to find out what hits 
And if you think, I should throw now, I should throw now, do it. Do not hesitate. Do not wait. Go for it. You'll, when you get more experience, you'll learn when to be patient and wait to throw and when to just throw instantly, right? But as a, as, as a beginner, you want to just throw, throw, throw. When you're more advanced, like, you, you'll, you'll, have, you'll have those instincts already built in of, like, when to hold and when to throw. Um, but yeah. Uh, but as, as you can see here, like, um, there's things that I've done. So even at the very start, right? I, ca I come around this corner and then I see someone, right? He crosses in, I get the hit, right? This is called a timing shot, right? This is where you just, you wait for them to run into your path. That was a fairly simple one. Like, there'll be ones where they just come out of, like, from behind, like, even more stuff where you're just expecting them to come across and you wait, you time it, right? That was a fairly simple one, but that's, that's, that, that's the general premise. This is more of an advanced thing. You'll learn the timing of how long it takes survivors to get across the map as you get more experience. So, this is more for, like, an advanced sort of thing that you would you would know. Um, anyway, so that, that that's that's that, like, it's a timing, cross-mappy type of shot, right? And then these are just... What I'm doing here is just predicting, right? Once you've played the played Huntress so much, you will know where survivors are going. You'll be able to predict where they're going to go, even if you can't see them, right? And whilst I may have missed here, a lot of the time you get hits. Like it's like when you just know survivor movement so well, you'll get a, get a lot of hits doing this. Sure, so, sometimes it's just gonna miss, right? But you're going like. It's because it's a prediction. You're never going to be one, right 100% of the time. Alright. So, yeah. And then, with looping as Huntress, this is, like, really... As a 110, it sucks. I'm just going to say it. Like, And as Huntress, it sucks. Because a lot of the time, you're going to want to pull up a hatchet and hit them. Like, I, like I'm doing here. Right? But general rule of thumb, and what I try to do most of the time, is... With, like, maybe a rock loop or a loop you can't throw over... Pull up the hatchet one time, and if they greed, just force the M1. It's 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 not worth, like, continually trying to pull up, because they'll just continue to greed, generally. Like, sure, there'll be the players out there that will change it up, but as a general rule of thumb, just try once. If they greed, just force that M1. Because, force them to move on, because otherwise they're going to keep you there all game, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, like it's it's it, it, everyone struggles with looping, like on Huntress because the, in the back of your mind it's just like I want to hatch them, I want to hatch them. But a lot of people know, keep away from windows and all this, and just a lot of people know how to because Huntress has so many counters. This is like yeah, my, a lot of people know what you're gonna do. Um, yeah. Anyway, keep going. Um, now when you're in. In a 1v1, when they're like close, when they're in front of you, right? What you can often do is flick to where they... Because, so, some, you can fully charge a hatchet or you can just flick early, right? So, when, they, when they're right in front of you, they're going to dodge, right? And if it's not fully charged, they're going to dodge. They're going to be able to dodge more easily. So, if you flick to where they're going to dodge, they're going to get hit. This is going to be... This is more an advanced thing that you'll learn from playing a lot of Huntress. And then, you can also use fully charged flick. Um, but... They have less free out time to react, but but they when you th the, the advantage of throwing faster and not letting it fully charge is that they don't expect you to throw that fast. Like honestly, of... almost no survivors expect you to just go wham 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 like go, hitting them right. Almost no survivors expect that. Right, so now this this shot right here is a com say? combination of a prediction and a snipe through a tight gap. Right. This is a fairly simple one. There's a lot of other more tight ones you can do, like through the water, water fountain on Dead Dog. Like, there's much tighter gaps, and through railings, there's much tighter snipes that you can get. But this is like a decent example of that, combined with a prediction of where they were going to go. Right? Because I could see they were running towards that that um that jungle gym, and I was just like, hmm, I'll just throw through here and see if they run onto it, and they did. Right? This is this is a prediction. Of where they're gonna end up, right? All right. So as a huntress main, there's a lot of things that are very hard, right? Like when survivors run to 
very complex loops or difficult loops like fun bus, shack, um, a lot of these kind of loops that are very strong, some jungle gyms that are really strong, right, like they're very hard to deal with, right? So if you can't get the down within like 15 seconds, 15, 20 seconds, like just, just leave. It's, it's, you're going to overcommit on when they're at a very strong area, right? That Huntress is just not good at, right? But here is an example of maybe how to get hits doing this. So, so, so to get hit, get the down or hit quicker, right? So you don't have to overcommit. Um, this is to do with mind gaming, um, red light mind gaming, which can be used at, this can be used at almost any loop anyway. Um, yeah, anyway, have a look. So see, I completely bamboozled the survivor by completely messing up my red light mind game, right? So if we watch it again, so I spin, right? He dead hards, which I expected, go for the door shot. This is like advanced stuff, right? I completely threw him off with where I was going. Uh, he was really like, what the hell is this guy doing? Um, I come around the corner, expect the dead hard, he dead hards. He like, he panicked dead hards around the corner. I get that door shot because he's not even thinking about that. He's just surprised more than anything. Yeah. Now for maps, Huntress, I wouldn't say Huntress has any good, good maps. She has decent maps, decent or very shit maps. All right. Now most indoor maps are shit. Very, very bad for her. Um, and a lot of outdoor maps can be decent, but then there's some that are very problematic as well. But uh, some of the really decent ones are a lot of the auto havens, cold winds. Even with the rework, it's hard, it's, it's harder to see, but it's still the same premise because you can hatch it a lot of things, right? Um, then obviously the 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 ones like ironworks, the ones with like more like big complex main buildings. Um, they're more complex and they're, they're just shit for Huntress. Like, and then the maps with more trees. So a lot of the McMillans like that can be bad. Some of them are good, but can be bad. Um, and then, uh, we've got like, um, then we've got, um, your bigger maps, like the Red Forest maps. Um, where are we? Yeah, the mother's mother's dwelling and um, temple. Honestly, temple, in my opinion, is one of her worst maps because if if, if survivors crouch, a lot of those loops are just unthrowable. They they're just shit, right? If a survivor crouches, it pretty much almost counters it, right? Um, so that for an outdoor map, that's probably one of her worst, in my opinion, and it's also big as well. But yeah, generally, generally. Indoor maps and big maps with lots of trees are generally very bad for it. Anyway, but having said that, when we're talking maps, um, I wouldn't avoid playing indoor maps and all these bad maps because there's always shots you can learn that will throw them off. And the more you play them, the better you'll be and you'll be able to work with what you've got, right? Like, you'll just get better at better, better and better. Yes, there might be shit maps, but you, you you can make do. Like, especially like the better you get and the more experienced you get, right? Because when I load into one of these maps, sure it sucks, but against most people, I can make it work and get something out of it and even win a lot of the time. So, yeah. The other thing to note again about um, strong areas like shack, main, strong loops, stuff like this that you can't throw over, like. Main buildings, shack, fun bus, these sort of things are designed to be hard for Huntress, unfortunately. They're just, they're just, it's just the way they are. Um, so, like, just remember, if it's taking too long, just leave them. You can catch people out when they're in weaker positions, because these very extremely strong spots are just not worth sp spending the game at. Anyway, on to the next thing, right? So, now I'm going to talk about, like, advanced builds. Now, honestly... When you get to the more advanced stuff, like when you know what you're doing and know what playstyle you like, you, there's, oh, there's so many options with Huntress, really. But one that always rings true, I don't, I don't even 
the, I don't. It, it doesn't matter what playstyle you have. Iron Maiden, in my opinion, is the best perk in the game for Huntress. It was built for Huntress. It was honestly built for Huntress. It is the best perk in the game for her, in my opinion. Um, I would recommend it to whatever playstyle you have. Even if you're like the type of Huntress that wants to go for guaranteed shots, Iron Maiden, it's, it keeps you in chase longer. Reloading is the biggest downtime that Huntress has in a game. You do not want to spend any more time doing it than you ha absolutely have to, right? Um, so, on, on that note, so like, if you're a Huntress that likes to go for like your guaranteed shots, your window shots, um, unhook shots is another really good one for people who like those guaranteed shots, right? Going for those shots where, so in the, when someone's in the action of unhooking, throw, it's almost guaranteed hit, right? Um, and then you've got like um, your gen shots, they're stationary, right? Um, I gotta say, window shot, pallet, pallet shots is another one, like where they just in an in an in an animation, you can't they 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 can't do anything about it, right? So these sort of shots. Builds for that would still be include Iron Maiden, but what what you'd also probably have is like um, you'd have you probably I'm all ears would probably be good for this because like again, even if say you don't catch them in the before the animation, you'll see where they're going, and be able to hatch at them right. Um, barbecue is solid also for all playstyles really. It's honestly, I, I I said before earlier in the video that. Um, barbecues, as a beginner, I like, I wouldn't recommend it too, but like, recommend c consistently relying on the auras, but like, it does give you an idea of how survivor movements and how they move, right? So even for beginners, it is a good thing to like, get familiar with that, but like, even as an experienced Huntress or an advanced Huntress, I'd never want to, want you to rely on auras. Like, yes, like auras, to me, I a learning experience. You learn wh how they move and where they go, right? Um, and you can use them to get shots later, right? Like, but you don't necessarily need to a need to aim and throw while the aura's up because you don't need to. Like, it is it is just an information thing, right? Um, but then, but yeah, it it can get you like really good at that sort of thing. So like, then it comes into the next thing. If you're a type of Huntress that loves going for those aura shots, you can do an aura build, right? You could do Barbecue, Retribution, Undying. Um, that's a really good combo. You could also do, like, um, I'm All Ears in there, again, because, again, aura. Um, you could throw in. You, you, there's so many options. Lethal Pursuer is a newer perk that also you can use, but this is extremely map-dependent. Um... And extremely spawn dependent. If you get like an impossible, like impossible map to do this, an impossible spawn to do it, it's honestly a dead perk. It doesn't work, right? But it can be really cool. It can be really cool for, for, that, for that type of huntress that loves to like go for those cross maps, like because auras, like, are honestly built for people who literally only cross map, right? If you're like me, who does a bit of everything. Um, auras aren't really that import important, and in my opinion, they're not that important in general. Um, but they they are good for for learning, so you know how patterns are, right? Um, yeah, uh, a lot of people like whispers. Um, I'm not a, I'm I'm not a fan of whispers because the big thing is, right? Crows. So when crow when someone runs through um, the map and you get a crow, you see crows in the distance, right? You know that they've been in that area recently. So if you aim to the left or right, like depending on where you've seen more action, which side, you can aim to that side, throw, and quite often you'll get a hit because they were there recently. They're running through there, right? This is a great way to tell where people are. Obviously, if they're walking, it's a lot harder. And that's the, the like, a lot of people like whispers for that reason. I'm not a big whispers for person. I used to be, but it's not something I would say use a perk slot on. Because um, generally, you'll be able to find people. Um, uh, but one thing I will say is, if you if you're running corrupt, it is it is an option to run corrupt whispers together because a lot of people can also hide during corrupt. But uh, 
yeah, this is this is really just a preference thing of what you what you want to do. Um, you could also do build with agitation, um, so that way that's another. It's it's kind of like Iron Maiden, right? You hook them fast, you get back into the get back into chase faster, right? Um, then you've got again with the auras, you've got nurses calling. Nurses is also a very good perk, right? Um, but this brings me into my next point: forced penance. This to me is Huntress's second best perk in the game, hands down. This this is just flat out my opinion on it. Um, forced penance is incredibly good on Huntress. It's one of the only perks left in the game that applies its effect on hatchets, right? So the way it works is. Two survivors are close to each other, literally at all close to each other, and you hit a hatchet from 30 meters away, it applies the broken status on that person because it counts as a protection hit, right? So this can be ha this can this can work for unhooks. You, the unhooker can get a broken status for 80 seconds. Uh, two people on a gen together, the person get, that gets hit can get a broken status, and this applies even if they're injured, right? If they're injured, they can be, be on the floor and have that broken status, right? Um, so an incredible perk and you can combine it with perks like nurses so you know when they're healing boom hit them right you can combine be combined with perks like that all the time um, so, re so really that there's there's so so many options with huntress for builds like it all depends what style you want to play. If you're like me and you do a bit of everything, I've got a bit of everything. Mi I've got minimal auras. Um, I've got like forced penance, which, like I said, I think it's a god tier perk. Um, like literally, whenever, when in any action where two survivors are in close to each other, it's great. Iron Maiden keeps you in chases longer, right? That's 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 like so chase minimal aura, um, and then people regression is honestly what I would call it. Call forced penance. Um, don't worry about the Blood Warden, that's kind of more niche. Like, honestly, you could just run Corrupt in its place. Because Blood Warden, depending on what region you're in, it's extremely hard. Like, for my region, it's extremely hard to get Blood Warden, to get value out of Blood Warden. Because most people expect it. Because um, my region is quite small. Um, anyway. But yeah, you could honestly just imagine Corrupt in its place. Um, like, because that would be extremely... Corrupt Barbecue, Force Penance, Iron Maiden would be, is an extreme, honestly, I would say it's probably, for an advanced player, like an all-rounder, like, like me, it's the best, the best build, honestly, in the game, for Huntress, when you know what you're doing, um, yeah, but yeah, so like, if you, like, and my, I should go, I'll go deeper into my playstyle, so I, I throw a lot, I, will, I go for a lot of predictions, I predict where you're going, I'm a very aggressive Huntress, I throw an extreme amount very fast try and get downs really 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 fast um, when I'm when I'm dead accurate you, you, it's it's very very scary um, then the like I said there's the animation lock the more guaranteed hit huntresses right that's like I can do that that's like some like part a small part of my playstyle but um and then I go for like cross maps and stuff so I do a bit of everything right that's kind of my playstyle. I'm very aggressive. I'll go for any anything and everything, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, um, I hope that was helpful um, on builds. <laughs> Sorry, it was a bit of, but oh, and uh, add-ons. Add-ons, you could really go with like when, when you're experienced, you can go with anything really. It you 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 you'll know what add-ons suit your playstyle. Um, yeah. Alrighty guys, so thanks for watching my, my my guide. I tried to include something for everyone, um, whether you're beginner or advanced master. Like I tried to include something for everyone. So I hope you got something out of it. Um, and if I've missed something, be sure to like come to one of my streams and ask me directly. Um, my stream is in the description, and so will my Discord. If you need any further help, so thanks for watching, guys.